Let's add a custom block entity renderer to our block entity. Alright, we found ourselves back until Tilda once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom block entity renderer to our block entity. Now, what does that mean? Well, a block entity renderer basically allows you to render almost anything well, that is renderable in the game onto your block entity's block. And what we are going to do is, of course, when we have our block, right, we have a little bit of a tray in the middle. And what I want to do is I want to basically render the item, either the item that is inside of slot one, or if there is a item in slot two, then I want to render that. That is basically all that we're going to do in this tutorial, but it's going to be actually really, really awesome. I have this in my own mod, of course, as well in resource slimes. I've already done that. And well, I mean, let's just begin. So in the entity package, we're going to right click new package and we're going to call this the renderer. And then inside of there, right click new Java class. This is the gem infusing station block entity renderer. So quite a long name, but no worries at all. This will implement the block entity renderer of type gem infusing block entity. Hover over this implement methods, the render method over here. And then we also need a public gem infusing station block entity renderer constructor with the block entity renderer provider dot context or context and we literally don't want to do anything with it we just need this constructor that's very important so the render method is basically where all of the magic happens and we're going to well basically copy over line by line so we're first of all going to copy over the basics and then we're going to have one error here but that's no worries so we the get render stack method is actually a thing that does not exist in our block entity so we're just going to hover over this create that method here and once again, I'm just going to move this all the way up over here just so that we have this a little bit higher up. There you go. And this will return the item stack that is to be rendered inside of our little tray, basically. Now, I'm also just going to copy the contents over of this. This is really simple. So this should not be confusing to you at all. We're just saying, hey, we're just getting a stack. If there is no stack, if there is a stack in slot two, so if there is something in this slot right here, then we're just going to return that. If there is not something in here, we're going to return whatever is inside of this slot. That's literally all that this does and literally all that we need to do here. Now, what we also actually do need to do is we need to synchronize this to the client again with a custom packet. So for that, once again, we're going to take the fluid sync packet, I think, and we're going to actually make this the item stack sync S2C packet. And this is going to look the following way. So this is actually going to take in an item stack handler over here. And this is going to be called the item stack handler. Let's just change this around over here. The item stack handler and of course equal to the item stack handler here as well. And now when it comes to the buffer, this is a little more complicated, but let's just take a look at how this works. So we're basically making a list so you can see we can read collections with the friendly byte buffer. And we're basically reading the items over here. So the, the general idea is that, right, because of course this one assigns the items from the, this assigns the items to the item stack handler. So we're reading a collection. And when we, of course, you know, use the two byte over here, we're creating a collection and then writing this collection. So you can see we're basically making a collection of item stacks and we're using the right item here. So if this is a little bit confusing to you, don't worry about it. This is basically just the way that you can, well, create an item stack handler via a friendly byte buffer. And then here we actually don't need the menu here. What we do need is we want a set handler method. We're going to create that in just a moment. And we're just going to say this item stack handler. So let's create that method as well. And also just move this a little bit higher up because it doesn't make any sense to have this at the very bottom there. So let's just use this right here. That's going to be okay. And this is going to actually copy this over. So the way that this is going to work is it's just going to do the following. So it's basically going to take the item stack handler and just set each stack in that slot. So the thing that we're basically passing in via the parameter here, we're getting how many slots this has and then sending each slot of the handler in the inventory itself to whatever is inside of the st stack that we are putting in here. This once again is just called on the client just so that it synchronizes everything as well. So let's just get this done in here as well. Let's, you know, register the message here. So this is the item stack sync S to C. Absolutely. There you go. So all of those. And then where do we call this? Well, we call this 
in the block entity at the very top over here on contents change. So we're going to say once again, if uh, not level dot is client side. So we have to be on the server. Very important that you negate this. Keep this in mind. And then we want to say more messages sent to clients. A new item stack sync STC packet passing in this and the world position. And that should pretty much do everything that we need to do. And this should now also synchronize the contents there as well. Uh, because if we don't do this, then it, the block entity renderer will only synchronize when we have the menu open or when we open the menu. And that's, of course, not quite what we want. We basically want this to happen automatically. Right, so you can see we're taking getting an item renderer over here, and then we're also getting the stack. Now, what are we doing? Well, here, we're basically just pushing the a, a post stack, and we're then translating, scaling, and changing the position of this particular item that we're rendering. And then comes the, well, I mean, the switch method over here, or the switch statement, because based on the facing, we basically want to change the positive Z rotation over here, uh, because otherwise it will only always be the same rotation. This is just rotating the item that we're rendering. And then when, when we render it, we want to do this. So we want to say item renderer dot renders render static, passing in the item stack. Uh, you know, this is going to be of transform type GUI. Get light level is a custom method that we're just going to copy over as well. This makes sure that the item isn't like dark or isn't like black, uh, because otherwise it will have sort of a black overlay. So we're getting the light level there. And then the rest, you know, passing in the block entity, the block entity position over here, no overlay, post stack, light buffer, and then the one here at the end. And then here at the end, popping the post stack, and then we should pretty much be fine. Now, the block entity render, of course, still has to be properly registered. And that happens in a method in the events over here. So we're going to go into our mod events class. Actually, the client events, this is a client event, of course, because we're rendering stuff. And I will just copy over the method. Nothing too crazy. And of course, everything available to you as well. This is the gem infusing station over here. So you can see we're using the entity renderers event that render register renderers and then registering a block entity renderer for this particular block entity and this particular block entity renderer class. And that is pretty much all that we need to do. So we need to synchronize this. That's very important. And then here in the render method, basically, this is where all the magic happens and all of the rendering happens. Uh, this you know, it's just a matter of trying to change the numbers as well. So those numbers basically, you know, I changed them until they worked. And that is pretty much all that we need to do in this case. So let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, fans is back in Minecraft. So let's just go in. And if once I actually go outside of this menu, we should see the diamond render. And there it is. The diamond is rendered exactly how you'd expect it to. And it is actually rendered properly because we set the block entity down in this direction. So if we just, you know, did the same thing again, right? If I put a raw zircon in, you can see there it is. The raw zircon It's actually rotated around, mirrored in this case. But, you know, that's totally fine. It still renders. And once we actually, you know, craft something here, then we can see, you know, it will change to the other one. There you go. So now it did change to the normal zircon. Absolutely freaking awesome. So this is a block entity renderer example here in this case. Hopefully that's going to be useful to you for all sorts of cool things that you can then show on your block entity. Uh, it definitely does add a lot of flair to it and it's just a really awesome thing to have. All right, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah.